What's going on YouTube? This is Marcus and I am back with a, let me see, hold on y'all. Let me see if I can fix this real quick, hopefully. I think that's a little bit better. But anyway, what's going on YouTube? This is Marcus and I'm back with another video. I wanted to come on here and do a quick recap of this show that I just hadn't been too long, got finished watching called The Worst Roommate Ever and it's on netflix the show was really really good it was only five episodes um but like i said it was really really good i'm actually hoping that they come out with a second season but pretty much the whole gist of the episode is y'all need to stop looking for roommates on on craigslist now the thing that was weird to me when when i hear stories about people be on craigslist looking for a roommate and i'm like you ain't got no family member or no best friend or somebody that can move in with you that you actually know and somebody that you can trust versus having a complete stranger come and live with you and not only that but when i was watching the show i, I would feel like if i'm if, if i were to have a stranger come and live with me i'm gonna do a background check on you before you come before i allow you to come live with me but anyway, so I'm just going to go episode by episode and give a quick synopsis. So the first episode was called Call Me Grandma. And the the antagonist in this show was a woman by the name of Dorothea Puente. Um, and so before we get into um, like what, this, what the episode was talking about, her crime, it, we kind of go a little bit into her past. And it and they talk about how she was charged and convicted of illegally cashing thirty four state and federal checks that belonged to some of the tenants in her boarding house. Um, but it wasn't up until around nineteen eighty two when her crimes had started, you know, getting more darker. Um, they talked about how she at one point was a prostitute. They talked about how one, at one point she was a madam. Um, they talked about how she would pretend to be a doctor or pretend to be a a medical practitioner and she would focus on people who were elderly people who was mentally disabled and people who struggled with addiction um and they talked about how you know these she would these people would end up dying and then she was still their social security checks now they went into this one story where there was a woman named I, I think her name was Ruth, Ruth Monroe. Um, this lady named Ruth Monroe, she was dating this man. They went out on a date to this cafe where Dorothea was working there at the time. Apparently, Dorothea and the guy that Ruth was dating were good friends. And so her and Ruth ended up becoming close. Um, the guy that Ruth was dating ended up dying of cancer. And so... I don't think they actually talked about how long Ruth and the guy dated, but pretty much after the after the man died, she didn't want to live alone. So her and Ruth ended up becoming roommates. And so one of the sons gives a testimony about how the first couple of days that she moved in there, she was fine. But as the days proceeded, she started getting sick. I, one day I remember him coming in and saying that... Um, she was, uh, Dorothea had gave her some kind of drink that was supposed to have been making her feel better, but it was actually making her much worse. Um, and th so when the mom actually died, they talked about all of these drugs and all of these different things that was found in her system. Um, and one of the other main stories was about a guy named Bert who lived in um Dorothea's boarding house which that was the main the main plot line for this episode um the guy named Bert lived in the house and he ended up getting missing and the social worker that had actually placed him in that boarding house you know had called the police trying to find out what was going on they went on this whole thing of you know questioning coming to the house and paying a visit um Dorothea had already knew that the police was coming to question her. So she had told all the tenants pretty much to, to lie for her and say that 
Bert had left with a relative. Uh, but there was one guy who had slipped one of the cops a note and, and it read, she, she told me to lie to you. So they ended up bringing him in to question him. Um, he said that he didn't know exactly where Bert was, but he know that she, he didn't leave in a relative. I think he had been missing for like two and a half, almost three months. Um, they ended up getting a search warrant to come in and search the house. They ended up bringing everybody in for questioning Dorothea and, um, the tenants. Everybody at this point and at that point, everybody was telling different stories. So they was telling the lady like, girl, you got to, you need to let us know what's really going on because you telling us one thing and everybody else is telling us something else. And they mentioned how, you know, when she was answering the question, she didn't flinch. She didn't seem nervous. She just was uh, looking the guy right in the eye and was answering the questions. No emotions, no nothing. So to make a long story short, I ain't, I ain't I don't want to take too much time. You really have to watch it. But to make a long story short, she was charged with a total of nine m murders, eight of them, which was her former tenants. Um, she was convicted on three of those murders, um, but the jury couldn't agree on the remaining six. Um, and so she she they, she was dubbed the death house, the death house landlady. Um, and she was given life without the, the possibility of parole. And then she, she died in prison in 2011 at the age of 82. And like I said, she was given life without parole, but I think she was like in her sixties or something by the time she got arrested. So I'm mean, kind of like, like, girl, you ain't got that much life to left, left to live anyway. But anyway, so that was episode one. The second episode was called be careful of the quiet ones. And the antagonist in this one was a man, was a, I don't know, was he Chinese or I'm going to just say he's Asian, but he, his name was Casey Joy. And the main character in this story was a woman named Melville Ramos, who was a U.S. Army veteran who, um, and she was also a student at, at California State University. Um, she met uh KC Joy through Craigslist and they became roommates. Um M Mirabelle's family said that um KC had developed an unhealthy romantic obsession with Ramos while they were living together. I remember the sister even was saying something about that he called her saying, you know, that I know that your sister wants to be married and and, and she wants to have kids and I want to be that man for her. And she said she told him, girl, Y'all just friends. She ain't gonna never like you like that. Um, why is an alarm going off? Uh, they they ended up getting into a conversation about rent because he was, you know, was after a while had started missing rent. Um, she ended up telling him like, "Girl, you got to get on up out of here" because he had missed several several months of, of payments of rent. And so when she had that conversation with him, they say that she was either murdered that day or the next day. Um, it was when they were investigating him, apparently he had went to the public library and was researching um, human decay. And he had looked at a looking up, I guess he was looking up good places to bury a body. Um, and so once they did that later on that day, they ended up searching that area. Um, and they ended up finding the body. So he got, ended up getting arrested that day and he was convicted of second degree murder and sentenced to 15 years for life. And, and as of present day, um, he has... He's still in he's still in jail and he still maintains his innocence. Um so that was episode two. Episode three was called Marathon Man. So there was a guy named Yusef Carter, I think is how you pronounce his name. Um he was living in Chile, um, and he was living in this twelve bedroom hostel. Um he said that he was a marathon runner who was being sponsored to set a record. Um, by running the length of Chile. Um, in, a, in a nutshell, my dog is, he's staring at me through my window. 
But in a nutshell, um, there was a sponsorship that was supposed to come with him running, but he scammed the, the, first of all, I don't, they gave him the money before he before he ran the marathon so he ended up taking the money without running and then he also scammed his roommates out of money and he took twelve thousand dollars in athletic gear and thirty eight thousand dollars from a british runner named dominic rayner there was also um he had a roommate named callie quinn um and in the process of them showing he, he was supposed to have been showing her a new apartment he ended up beating her over the head with a toilet seat and had buried her alive. Um, because apparently he owed he he owed a lot of people money, but he owed her money specifically. Um, and so she was she told a friend of hers that um he owed her money. So he ended up she ended up surviving. He ended up getting arrested. Um. And he admitted that he attacked her, but he says he never intended to kill her. But how you gonna say you never intended to kill her, but you buried her alive because you thought she was dead? Um, he ended up being extradited from Chile to Denmark and acquitted of three of the five charges against him. Um, when he when he first got convicted, he was convicted up for. 200 days was it 200 days was it two i think yeah i think it was 200 days um but he only served prison for three months before he was released and as of today he's still roaming free don't nobody know where he at uh, uh, apparently he's um in 2017 he was arrested for fraud in costa rica but he got released soon after that and as up to today Nobody knows where he is and he's living under different, different aliases. So that was episode three. Episode four and five was a two-parter and it's called Roommate Wanted. Um, so this is basically the, from what I understand, the story that inspired the docuseries. So there was a guy named, um, I forgot what his first name was, but his last name was Bachman. So he moves into the house of Alex Miller. He immediately becomes a roommate from hell, pretty much taking light bulbs, removing chairs, refusing to pay rent. Now he apparently scammed about a good three, four, five women. And all of these women, their stories are all the same. When he first moved in, he was an awesome, amazing roommate. And then after he had been there for a month, he stopped paying rent. Um, he claimed I, there was one person in particular that said that he claimed to have been a lawyer. Um, and so when it came time for them to try to evict him or to serve him with papers, he knew the ju the, the uh, justice system so well, they wasn't able to just, well, first of all, I think when you evict somebody, you have to give them 30 days. But for some of these women, he ended up staying there for like months at a time because they had to go through, you know, trying to get, evictions and all that things um he, he got to the point where he was physically abusive to some of the roommates when they would try to make him leave um alex's mom um it was discovered by alex's mom that he was a serial squatter so he pretty much would use the tenancy law to terrorize people up and down the east coast um, he would con his way into people's homes with sob stories and then try to make the roommate's life so um, so terrible that they, would end, that they would end up leaving. But then they would come back and try to make him leave. And that's when things got violent. Um, eventually, it got to the point where he was the, the final one of the final girls that he was with. It got so violent that he she ended up he ended up being arrested and she ended up getting a protective order against him. He ended up getting bailed out of jail by the brother, by his brother. Something happened to where, um, the, he, he violated his, his protective order. So he ended up getting arrested again. The brother came and bailed him out again, but the brother, 
it was said that the brother wouldn't allow him to come and live at their house because of his allegedly violent past. And so him and the brother got into it. He ended up killing the brother. Um, and he ended up dying by suicide um, in the Montgomery Correctional Facility because he was actually supposed to have went to court with Alex Miller because of the fact that he had violated the protective order. Uh, but he ended up killing himself in prison. Um, so yeah, that was it. Like I said, the show was really, really, really y'all need to be, y'all need to, st if y'all gonna be um, on here uh, 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 recruiting roommates off of Craigslist, y'all better start doing background <laughs> checks on people. Now, I thought that most people did, like, re they ask for like references and stuff like that when they get rumors or maybe maybe that's just stuff I, maybe that's just stuff you see on tv um because what it is with this with, the, with episodes four and five in, in particular it would get to the point where they wasn't able to afford to pay where they was living at and so they would put in the ad for a roommate but I'm like, girl, if you can't afford to live where you're living at, then you need to go find, you need to go move somewhere that's a little bit cheaper versus you trying to live somewhere. And then not only that, but how long if you bring somebody in to help you pay pay for the rent or pay for whatever, like how long do you expect the people to stay there? Because eventually they probably going to get to the point where they want to get their own spot and live out on their own. So then you still in a tight spot because you're going to have to go back to paying. I mean, I, I mean, I guess if you have somebody to kind of move in and help pitch in with everything, then you can kind of, you know, put money to the side. Um, but in, yeah, whatever. That's, that's, a, that's, that's, that's the whole nother thing. But I would definitely encourage you. I, I, like I said before, I'm real. I'm really into this, like the true crime stuff. I watched the, um, the, the, uh, confessions of a serial killer. They got one about Ted Bundy and they got one about John Wayne Gacy. I watched both of those. Those are really good. I'm really, like I say, into the crew, tr the true crime stuff, but this was a really, really, really good show. Like I said, I'm, I'm hoping that they come out with the part two, but anyway, if you've seen the show, comment down below and tell me what you thought about it. And tell me which one did you think was the craziest. Um, personally, I think that uh, episode, oh, there it go, Jameson Bachman. I feel like, I think his was the craziest. Um, but the crazy thing, well, never mind. Because I was going to say the crazy thing is he the only one that didn't kill nobody. But he did kill his brother. Actually... The, the guy from episode three, he's the only one that, that didn't kill anybody, although he did attack somebody. Um, but yeah, y'all, y'all comment down below and tell me what y'all thought the craziest was. But anyway, I thank you all for tuning in. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, and I will talk to y'all later.